I've always been a pretty big fan of the Triglavian ship designs ever since they were added to EVE Online. I mean, look at them, who doesn't like the Drekovac or the Kikimura, or even the Ikatursa? These are just such cool looking ships, and in addition to that, the Entropic Disintegrators are such a badass concept. This high-powered laser that just bores into the side of the target, increasing with intensity the longer it's focused in. The trouble is that essentially, as much as I love the Triglavian ships, they definitely have more of a PvP leaning due to how the Entropic Disintegrators work. They're also fairly expensive ships, which means I don't get to fly them as often as I'd like to. So, when someone suggested to me, hey, could you run a Drekovac in C3 wormholes? Well, that was the perfect excuse for me to skill into one, buy one, fit it, and give it a go. For your entertainment, honest. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another video for EVE Online. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this beast of a ship that you see on screen now. This is the Triglavian Drekovac. What a beastly vessel this is. It has a fearsome reputation in PvP. In PvE, well, you're going to see that later on. And even just look at it, I love that sort of sleek angularity to it all. It's got this sort of brutal design, like these spikes and fins all over it. And who doesn't love the Triglavian power cores, these doomsday looking, glowing orange spheres um, inside these pyramid-like structures. Even the entropic disintegrators themselves at the back are just these menacing looking orbs that float around your ship and just zap the ever-living daylights out of whatever they are firing at. Now, I was doing some research into the different names of the Triglavian ships because they're all based around sort of Slavic mythology. Now, whilst the Damovic and the Kikimura are disappointingly named after good house spirits that help keep the house clean, I was really hoping that the Drekovac was going to have something a bit more badass behind it, and it really does. In South Slavic mythology, a Drekovac is described in various different ways as essentially being a screamer or a screecher. In some folk tales, it's depicted as an undead man who emerges from his grave by night to haunt the living. In others, it's a revenant portrayed as an unbaptized child rising from its grave at night to haunt its parents. In eastern Serbia, it's been depicted in the form of a humanoid canine creature that walks on its back legs. In the vicinity of Maglaj, it's been depicted in the form of ghosts of soldiers that run around during the night time. There's just so much cool stuff here. Long-necked, long-legged creature with a cat-like head, vampire-like undead men men, form of a one-legged humanoid creature with glowing eyes. It's, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I was hoping the Drekovac would be named after. Really cool stuff, but anyway, I could wax lyrical about the folklore behind it and the Triglavian lore behind it all day. That's going to take a long time. If you enjoy this video, hit like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below letting me know how you feel about this ship and the Triglavians in general. If you want to go the extra mile, hit up my PayPal, my Patreon, or my Redbubble merchandise store, and if you need some help, ask questions in the comments come join my discord i can get you 1 million free skill points by clicking my referral link down below every account can do that once um, and beyond that as well if you come join our discord i do monthly giveaways as well anyway all of that said and done then let's jump right in to talking about the triglavian drekovac Understanding the Drekovac requires that we take a look through its traits and attributes pages just to get a feel for it, because these are very different ships to a lot of the things you may have otherwise been flying. Triglavian vessels use their own unique skills that do not come from any of the main empires. I mean, for example, if you're looking to fly something like the Estero, then you need Galente and Amar frigate bonuses, right? Not so with the Drekovac or the other Triglavian ships. You are going to need to buy a load of skill, point, uh, skill books that are essentially fun armed by other people in abyssal dead spaces. So you're going to need things like precursor skills, and those are going to need to be either farmed in abyssals or bought off the market. Be prepared. And you are going to still have to climb those like you would anything else. So the Drekovac requiring, uh, requiring precursor battle cruiser means you are going to have to buy and skill a precursor frigate to three, precursor destroyer to three, and precursor cruiser to three. And if you want to have the Entropic Disintegrator skills, Medium Precursor Weapons, again, you're going to have to have Small Precursor Weapons to 3, then buy Medium Precursor Weapons and train that up. 
These are really unique ships, and we'll have a look at the fittings and the attributes in a second, but let's start off with the traits. First of all, roll bonuses. You can use a Command Burst module. It's a battleship, right? It's like the Hurricane or the Drake. You can fit a Command Burst module to it. And these are very good with um, armor Command Bursts, because a lot of the Triglavian ships heavily rely on armor tank. We get a 50% bonus to Command Burst Area of Effect range. Not that that matters if we're soloing stuff, but good for fleets and small gang PvP. 25% bonus to Heavy and Tropic Dis uh, Disintegrator Optimal Range, which is really powerful. A 50% reduced Energy Neutralizer Capacitor Need, good for PvP. 50% reduced Remote Armor Repair Capacitor Need, again, small gang, sort of remote repping spider tanking. Hell yes, really powerful. 50% reduced Smart Bomb Capacitor Need, and 100% bonus to Remote Armor Repair Range. You can see that these are very much designed around small gang PvP doing spider tanking. Then if we look at the Precursor Battlecruiser bonuses, these give us a 10% bonus to Heavy and Tropic Disintegrator damage, 50% at full training, and a 4% bonus to all armor resistances, which takes us up from 16% at level 4 up to 20% at level 5. Now I'm showcasing this with Precursor Battlecruiser 4 only. I haven't taken this up to 5 yet. So what you're going to see is based purely on 4 levels of skill. Now under the fitting, it's worth noting we only have a single turret on this. That's a standard when it comes to Triglavian ships. They all have one turret, which you will probably fit with obviously an Entropic Disintegrator. It does its thing and it does it well, but you don't need a full bank of different things. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's have a look at the fit itself. The aim of this fit is to run the two most popular C3 combat sites, notably the Fortification Frontier Stronghold and Solar Cells. And if we have a look at the details for those two sites, we can see there is a certain amount of neutralization that we need to be handling, and a certain amount of incoming DPS that we need to be able to survive. Now, this is a little bit misleading, because we don't actually need to fully survive the DPS, because of course as we kill ships we are reducing the total incoming DPS, and the same with the neutralization. It does help to be as stable as possible, but you'll notice this fit is a little bit deceptive, but we're going to simulate that and explain it in a moment. Now starting with the high slots, it's worth noting that for this fit, for this video, I'm showcasing this using Precursor Battlecruiser 4 and Medium Precursor Weapon 4. Obviously you can tweak this fit as you see fit, I'll have it linked in the description down below so you can test it in-game or in Pyfer or whatever you want to do there, and absolutely as your skills go higher you may find that there are better ways to fit this, but this is just a basic starting point. For the high slots then, we have a Velesh Heavy Entropic Disintegrator. I've gone for the Velesh because it's technically better than the Tech 2 version and requires lower skills. Once you do reach uh, level 5 in the Medium Precursor weapon skill as well and start training into the Disintegrator Specialization skill, you can also use the Specialist Ammo with the Valesh Heavy as well. Ultimately though, you can see here one thing that is worth noting is that the optimal range and fall off when it comes to Triglavian weapons are the same. There is no fall off range on these. You are either in range or you are not. It's also worth noting that the DPS might look a little low to start with, but remember that Entropic Disintegrators ramp up over time. As long as you are still attacking the same target, every single cycle will increase your DPS. It doesn't matter if you're hitting or missing, just as long as you are still attacking the same target. If you stop firing at a target and change to another one, your DPS will reset back to its base value. Bear that in mind. The other high slot of note is an Armor Command Burst. I'm only using an Armor Command Burst 1 because again, it's all I have skills for and it works, but if you do end up having an Armor Command Burst 2, well, you're going to get better results than I am. I'm using the Armor Energizing Charge for this in order to keep my resistances up because that's just going to help reduce the incoming damage. The other two high slots are our Wormhole Utilities, as I like to call them, Prototype Cloaking Device, and a Core Probe Launcher. Now, the Prototype Cloaking Device is there if we need to warp to a save point. If someone jumps us, we can warp warp to a safe point and the second we land on grid we can cloak up. There's now very little they can do to find us. Nice easy way to stay safe and wait it out while your friends come and rescue you or until those people get bored and move off and do something else. In a worst case you can decloak and do a quick safe log off as well um, but it is a risky maneuver, bear that in mind. 
Of course, the probe launcher is there in case a wormhole collapses behind us, we can find our own way out. Very useful, again, if you do get jumped and you have to run away, and you have to run in a direction that isn't necessarily ideal. Nothing worse than getting caught in a wormhole without a probe launcher and just being stuck there and having to go to Eve Scout or whoever to rescue you out of it. For the mid slots, most of this is about capacitor stability. Remember, we, we're getting a lot of neutralization going on in these sites. So we have here a Thuka large cap battery and two cap recharger twos. This just helps us with that capacitor stability. There's also a propulsion module here. I've gone for a 10 mega newton monopropellant enduring afterburner. Again, you can go for something like a 10 mega newton two or even one of the faction ones if you want to bling this up a little bit. But ultimately, this is going to do the job for you just fine. It's about keeping you up next to whatever you want to be shooting at, allowing you to stay in range. Now, you'll notice that I've talked about capacitor stability, but we are not cap stable here. That's because this is kind of lying to you. For the most part, I'll actually only be running one or two armor repairers, and these are medium armor repairer twos here in the low slot. You can see that with one of these active, we're completely cap stable. Nice delta of 23.3 gigajoules per second, 45.5%, with a capacitor sustainable at 70.1%. If the damage coming in is a little bit higher, we can swap to two of these and we still maintain capacitor stability, sustainable at 46.3% with a 6.7 gigajoules per second delta. That is a little bit low though. Because the second wave of a Fortification Frontier Stronghold has two of the Awakened Upholders, each doing six gigajoules of neutralization, ultimately, for a brief moment of time, you are going to have more neutralization than you can handle with two of these running. But the second you've killed that first Upholder, the six gigajoules per second is now lower than our Delta, therefore you are cap stable. The only reason to have three of these is that when that third wave spawns in the Fortification Frontier Stronghold, you can be taking a lot of incoming damage from that battleship whilst you get yourself into a position where you're using angular momentum and velocity in order to reduce incoming damage. As such, again, we have that third one to switch it on for the time being, but it's there as a temporary measure. Essentially, you could try overheating the other two, but then you start having to worry about nanite pastes. It's kind of up to you. I do know some people who only run dual reps on this rather than triple reps um, for the capacitor stability and then just overheat as needed, but you will need decent thermodynamic skills in order to make that work. It's worth noting you can actually bling this out a bit here. If you have about a billion ISK available, you could pop in some Corpum A types in order to um, like really increase that armor repping. Two, armor, uh, two Corpum A types actually works out better ca uh, cap stability for slightly better armor repair. So bear that in mind if you are willing to go bling on this, that's where I would bling straight off. Swap out two of the armor repairers for Corpum A types and then drop the other medium armor repairer for something else. We've got a bit more tank here with two multi-spectrum energized membranes. Again, this is just to keep up those armor resists here. And we have a reactive armor hardener. It's worth spending a brief moment to talk about this because this is one of the most misunderstood modules, especially for wormholing. Now, what a reactive armor hardener does is it looks at what damage you're taking and then it hardens itself in different ways. It increases its resistances to the damage types that you are taking whilst decreasing resistances to the damage types you're not taking. Now, that sort of explanation can be a little bit misleading because it leads a lot of people to say, well, hang on, sleepers do electromagnetic and thermal with their turrets, and then they do explosive and kinetic with their missiles. So as soon as you get hit with a turret, surely that goes to electromagnetic and thermal, dropping the explosive and kinetic, but the second a missile hits you, it drops its electromagnetic and thermal and increases its kinetic and explosive. Well, yes and no. If you had no other resistances, that is exactly what a reactive armor hardener would do. However, we do have other resistances, and if you look at those, you can see that currently we have 79% electromagnetic and 72% thermal, compared to 68% on kinetic and 66% on explosive. So what actually happens with the reactive is it doesn't just look at the incoming damage, it looks at the actual damage you've taken after your resistances have in, uh, interfered with that. Therefore, when you take the first shot from a turret, yes, it's going to go electromagnetic and thermal because you've taken some damage from that. But the second you take explosive and kinetic, it looks that you've taken more damage from that source and begins to plug that hole more. It increases those resistances. It then looks at the fact that you then take another shot from the electromagnetic and thermal turrets and it goes, well, okay, but I'm, I don't need to plug that because the resistances on the thermal, uh, on the kinetic and explosive aren't as high as that and those are handling just fine. Then another missile hits 
hits and it goes, yep, I want to harden in that slot again that little bit more. It is an incredibly potent module for running sleepers because it is going to essentially adjust to whatever your hole is and it's going to be better than a multi-spectrum would otherwise. You can see here that these are doing 21.6 across the board there. This one is starting at 15%. It's going to go higher than 21.6 by time it has reacted to what's incoming and it will balance that out nicely to plug the hole to the best of its ability and help equalize your resistances. Now the final slot, because there's nothing else really to put in any of them, is an entropic radiation sink. And ultimately, if you do decide to go down the Corpum A-type route and drop one of the medium armor repairers and have just two Corpum A-types, then you're going to end up with a spare slot. Now it's tempting just to go straight from an entropic radiation sink too, certainly that will increase your DPS and your clear time, not a bad idea by any stretch. You might want to also consider something like a damage control unit just to help increase those armor resistances even higher and reduce incoming damage, but it is up to you. It's entirely up to you how you see fit to make that work. Now for the rigs, I've gone from medium capacitor control circuit 2, medium auxiliary nano pump 1, and a medium auxiliary nano pump 1. This is all about getting those armor reps to do a little bit more whilst helping your capacitor to the best of its ability. It is worth noting that of course we do have some drones in here, I've gone for some hammerhead 2s and some hobgoblin 2s, again you can go for the navy issue if you'd prefer. The drone damage isn't huge, it looks like a big percent at the moment, 142.5 out of 31, 319.3, it's almost half. But remember, this is going to ramp up dramatically as the Valesh Heavy Entropic Disintegrator spools up. So with all of that said and done then, let's actually showcase this in action, shall we? I'm warping the Drekovac here into a C3 Fortification Frontier Stronghold. You should be pretty familiar with this site if you've watched any of my other C3 ratting videos. I like to showcase this site side by side so you can kind of see the time difference between the different ships and how they run, but also I'm showcasing it in this site for a very specific reason, and that's because this site is technically the one that is going to give the Drekovac most issue, since the Drekovac is not particularly cap stable compared to some of the other ships that I've showcased. So we're going to do the usual thing, warp into the site, set up our resistances, drop a mobile tractor unit, save its location, bookmark that mobile tractor unit. Now here I really should have started drifting already to reduce the amount of damage I'm taking. You can see I don't have my afterburner or my, um, I'm not moving and I don't have the afterburner on. I've got one armor repairer running at the moment. Because the targets are nice and close, I'm going to go after those emergent defenders first of all. The awakened defenders are the triggers and emergent defenders are going to be a problem for our drones when I remember to launch those and use them um, because the sleeper frigates like to go after drones as a priority. So we're going to use Tetrion ammo, it's short range high tracking um, and higher DPS, it's going to burn through those emergent defenders just that little bit faster. Now normally I would pretty much skip ahead on this, but I do want to showcase throughout this site a lot of what's going on so you can kind of see the ramp up effect that the entropic disintegrators have. So again, we're going after the emergent defenders first and foremost, they're frigates, they are going to hurt our drones, they're a little bit faster moving. Um, the Awakened Defenders do the most DPS, but you can see comfortably right now, we are coping with just one medium armor repairer running. You don't need to have anything more than that running, uh, which means we're completely cap stable. We're quite comfortable with that. Drones did take a little bit of damage. Um, I recalled those a little bit too slowly. Um, I should also have sent them back out by now, but again, this harkens back to the whole thing of when I'm flying ships for these videos, I fly so many different ships that I don't always remember everything about each of them when I'm in a combat scenario. If this is the ship that you are going to be flying as sort of your mainline ship, you'll get used to it a lot faster than I do. You'll know innately the different ranges of the different ammunition types. You'll remember your drones. You'll remember all of the stuff that I forget simply because I'm used to just running so many different ships. Keep descanning, keep doing the thing. I should be really have sent those drones out now, but let's watch this Awakened Defender. Essentially, you can see that right now it's not taking that much damage at all from the Tetrion ammo. Remember, this starts low DPS. Again, I should have the drones out because they're 145 DPS on their own, and I've kind of forgotten to do that. I'm answering questions in uh, Corp and Fleet chat right now whilst doing this. I'm not descanning as much as I should. Just trying to, you know, be Benzie and support people <laughs> whilst running content. But there we are, we're going to orbit about 15 kilometers on this because it just gives us a little bit of range. Theoretically, we should be manually piloting and moving towards that structure that you can see in the distance there. Um, remember, in C3 sites, well, in fact, in all of the JSpace sites, the rats spawn at set 
positions, which means if you know where the rats are going to spawn, you can be there ready and waiting for them. And since the third wave has a battleship, we kind of want to be fairly close to it so we can start orbiting it for good traversal velocity straight up. Anyway, you can see that the Awakened Defender is taking a bit more damage now from that Entropic Disintegrator as it's spooling up and doing a bit more damage. Um, you can kind of see there 2,112 damage from that hit there. It's nice big hits. It just takes a while to ramp up to it. Ultimately, this actually... <coughs> Excuse me, this actually means that the frigates um, go down pretty quickly, the battleships go down pretty quickly, but some of the cruisers take a little bit longer because they, they're they kind of in the weird ground. With a frigate, it's not got much HP, so you burn through it quickly. With the battleships, you very quickly get your DPS up to a very high point and just start burning through it, whereas the cruisers, you're kind of in that middle ground where it takes a while to warm up to the point where you kill them. But, yeah. They've got more HP than the frigates, so you don't kill them as quickly when you're at low DPS. Um, but they don't have, they don't last as long as the battleships, which means you don't ramp as high. So they're kind of the ones that feel most awkward to kill. But anyway, you can see we swap the range here to something that's a little bit further away. I'm within 30 kilometers, so this one's going to work. Um, it should probably start turning around and drifting toward that structure at this point. Um, but again, even if I do decide to get closer, if I start to move into, say, uh, the 10 kilometer range, I probably won't swap to Tetrion, even though the Tetrion then would be in range suddenly. Um, it's better to keep the DPS ramp that I've got on the Baryon at this point. I could swap to the Tetrion for higher DPS, but that higher DPS is actually going to be lower than the Baryon with the ramp, if that makes sense. The only reason you ever really want to swap ammo is if the fight's going to go for a while, like against the battleships, um, you will want to swap there so that you can actually get the ramp. You've got enough time to ramp back up to good DPS from the initial drop. Um, or if you're finding that the tracking simply isn't working, like you're orbiting at, say, five kilometers and the ammo that you're using isn't tracking well enough. Now, wave two of this, we suddenly have Awakened Upholders. These are cruisers, don't have much HP at all. They like to orbit at a really annoying range of 30 kilometers, so you need to make sure you've got something that's longer than 30 kilometers to sh start shooting at them. They also do webs and newts, six gigajoules per second of newts each, so I'm gonna be hit with 12 gigajoules per second of neutralization at this point in time. Fortunately, they are pretty squishy, so they go down very quickly, as you'll see in a second. Unfortunately, they are the triggers, so you are going to have to deal with the fact that one of them is going to have to be left alive, otherwise you're going to spawn wave 3 early, and spawning wave 3 with the two additional awakened defenders really hurts your tank, as you'll see in a moment. Essentially though, we're just going to burn that Awakened Up Holder um, down as quickly as possible. We're then going to take down the two Awakened Defenders. We should be in a nice tight orbit around them at that point, so we can swap to the Tetrion um, in order to take them out, and then we'll move on to Wave 3. You'll notice before I skip ahead here, I currently still only have one armor repairer running. Things are pretty good on the armor repair front right now, um, so you might be sitting there thinking, hang on a second, why do I even need three armor reps? Three armor reps is clearly overkill, you've only activated one of them. Well, yes, that's true, until wave three spawns. So here we're about to take down that last Awakened Upholder from Wave 2. You can see Wave 3 spawns there in the distance. I'm a little bit further away than I wanted to be. I did have to start manually flying towards that last Upholder because it just decided to keep its range from me. Um, but theoretically, you want to be as close to these guys as possible. That Sleepless Upholder does massive amounts of damage you are going to want to try and close the gap with that by spiraling in. You need to keep your traversal velocity up. You'll see I've already got two armor repairers running. I'm no longer cap stable because that awakened up holder is now neutralizing me. And two armor repairers running with that one newt from the uh, awakened up holder is already enough to push me into cap instability. I've also got 12 gigajoules per second of neutralization coming from the sleepless up holder, but that one we're just gonna have to deal with. As you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage here, which means I'm suddenly having to run all three armor reps. You will cycle these later on, but for now, because I'm taking a lot of damage, because I'm far away from that battleship, it's therefore got good tracking against me, it's getting some really hefty damage shots off, we are just going to nuke that upholder and start to spiral in on the sleepless upholder. That is going to be our main target. Get rid of the Awakened Upholder first, because those newts, it's only 6 gigajoules compared to 12, but it dies pretty quickly, and I'd rather get those off as fast as I can. 
now we're going to swap down to the tetrion and start to nuke through that awakened defender basically i don't want to start on the sleepless upholder at this point using longer range ammo whilst i know i'm trying to close the gap on it essentially i want to get the dps down from the awakened defenders first of all um whilst i approach the sleepless upholder again going in angled never fly a straight line go in at like a 45 degree angle and then start to spiral inwards keeps your traversal all the way up means that you're taking less damage from it but you are still closing the distance you can see it's there in the distance now that sleepless upholder i do want to be going for that soon it is technically now in range of the tetrion so we could start shooting that but also the baryon it's the middle ground one it's higher dps than the uh the the, the mason but not as high as the tetrion but it's got the middle range as well now, theoretically, that's a very stupid thing to do, because what I've just done trying to change the, uh, the, the the target is I've reset my DPS, which means suddenly that Awakened Defender is taking 300 DPS again, rather than probably about the 900 that it was taking a moment ago. But you live and learn. Again, you guys, if you are using this ship um, and you're a bit more dedicated to flying it, you'll learn not to make these mistakes. I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. You'll also see that now the capacitor is really struggling, but I've got an orbit up against the sleepless upholder, which means I'm taking less damage from it. I also don't have the web, so I've got a bit faster traversal, making me harder to hit. It means that I can actually now just go back to running one armor repairer, and that is going to be sufficient for the time being. There goes the awakened defender. It's going to go down in a second. Next shot should kill it if I'm thinking right there. Boom, there we go. And onto the sleepless upholder. Now, this is where I am going to now swap to the Tetrion because I'm in range and we're going to start ramping from zero with the Tetrion and get some really nice damage out against it. Anyway, at this point, that's basically the site. You just keep descanning to make sure that no one's about to jump in on you, warp out to a safe the second that someone does. Um, otherwise, yeah, now you just kill everything and warp out to your safe point, warp back into your mobile tractor unit bookmark, loot it and move on to the next site. And that brings me nicely to the topic of different sites. I've also run this ship through the Aruz Construct, the Outpost Frontier, and Solar Cells. Now, Solar Cells are actually pretty easy to run. They've got lower DPS, no neutralization at all. The Drekovac chews through them, no issues at all. It just has warp scrams in it, which means if someone does decide to jump in on you, someone does decide to quickly warp in on your position on D-Scan, you might not have the possibility of getting away. Now, Drekovac can be a scary PvP target, and you do have the uh, reps to deal with that. It might actually end up getting you a nice PvP kill, but assume that it's going to be a fleet following in. You do theoretically want to warp out to the best of your ability, so work on those scrams. Now here as well I do something that you should never do. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, obviously I'm taking screenshots here to use for the thumbnail of the video and that kind of thing, but this means I'm not de-scanning, um, I'm not... Uh, watching what's going on locally. Someone could be warping in on me. That said, I do have friends in the system as well, currently mining, or gas huffing rather, and they're also in voice comms with me, so they're kind of de-scanning for me as well. Anyway, my orbit is about to take me through here, so I just need to do a bit of manual piloting so I don't crash into the uh, the structure, because that is just going to leave me a sitting duck for wrecking shots on the sleepless upholder. It's worth also just having a look at the amount of damage we are now dealing to that every time we shoot. Good amounts of damage there, uh, just melting through it. Anyway, so yeah, the solar cell, pretty straightforward. The Aruz construct, same thing, just know your triggers and it's pretty straightforward as a site to run. In fact, the only one I'd say does have any issues to it is the outpost frontier. I would say that the fortification frontier is the one that kind of proves that the Drekovac can work because the Drekovac's biggest weakness is it's not cap stable when it's taking that full amount of damage. But if you can still survive all that neutralization in the Drekovac, then yeah, that's your biggest problem and you can survive it. So it's not a huge problem. On the other hand, the outpost front, uh, fortification frontiers, um, those do have turrets in them. Now, when I started this site, you saw that I sat still for a long time while I dropped the mobile tractor unit. Oh, Fleet Finder update, of course, get all that pop up on the screen and ruin my footage. Um, basically, yeah, you kind of get this situation where you warp in and you've got these turrets on you. Whereas at the start of this site, I took a long time just getting set up and then decided to start flying around with an outpost. The second you land, you double tap in space to start moving, get up as much traversal against those turrets as possible, activate your, uh, your, uh, activate your afterburner and your armor 
uh, your armor, the, 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 oh, come on Benzie, brain's not working all of a sudden. Activate your assist modules is what I'm trying to say. The armor hardener and the, uh, the armor command burst. That will then help you survive. You then worry about dropping the mobile tractor units once you've got Angular up, once you've got your resistances all good and going. Because otherwise those are going to do some massive damage to you early on. And you just need to bear that in mind that whilst you're clearing that site, those are actually going to be pretty... You, you want to get rid of those turrets. They're going to be pretty high priority for you to get rid of. Um, and then you can worry about killing all the rest of the ships later on. Anyway, though, folks, that's pretty much it. The Drakovac in C3s, yeah, really good option. It's a little bit cheaper than the Tier 3 cruisers that I've been showcasing. That's a lie. It's a lot cheaper than the Tier 3 cruisers I've been showcasing. Cheaper than the battleships. It will run all four sites just fine. It's just a little bit more intense in regards to the skill points because they don't benefit anything else. You're just having to go into Precursor. Remember, I'm running this at Precursor Battlecruiser 4 and Medium Precursor Weapon 4. So if you do train those higher, this is going to be even easier and fun faster for you. Just, you know, bear that in mind. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please let me know. Hit like, drop a comment down below on what you think of the Drekovac. This took 13 minutes to, uh, to clear this entire site, which is a really fast clear time as well. A lot of fun to fly. I know it's a popular ship for PvP as well, so having a PvP ship that you can refit for PvE, that's got to be a bonus, right? Anyway, folks, happy sailing, and see you all in New Eden!